my computer. Okay, so tonight we're going to be talking about facts versus faith versus feelings. Facts, faith, feelings. Okay, now we get these confused. We <laughs> and we know if we honest with ourselves, we get these confused. I know I do, because <laughs> you know I know I have. Thank you, Holy Spirit, just corrected me. I have gotten these things very confused. And it will send us down the wrong path quick. It will make us make a detour down the street and give us 10 more. You ever, you know how you get a GPS and you make the wrong turn and give you like two more minutes to your ride? <laughs> That's what our feelings do. That's what those feelings do. It takes you up and down, make you all double-minded, don't know if you're coming or going. That's what them feelings do. And we need to make sure we are not letting our feelings rule us now why am i talking about this today because and i know um jeannie you can you can attest to this because i teach or i would say the way of the righteous is a ministry and uh that's based off of the 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 teaching of peace you know, that's, I teach about eating healthy as well, but peace has been what the Lord gave me um, to minister to. It's like, you know, that's, that's the anointing, the, the gift that, that he, he gave me to teach people how to stay in that peace, right? So every time I do a peace challenge, I can tell who, who gathered the information intellectually and who actually walked in it, right? <laughs> because peace is not something that you feel. I know that sounds very weird to people, but it's not something that you feel. It is a state of, uh, and we'll get we'll get to that because I want to I want to like I'm gonna peel this thing real slow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm gonna peel this thing real slow. But what often happens is people will come to me in a panic, right? And they'll go, oh, Sister Natasha, um, I was in my peace. <laughs> I was in my peace and something happened. And, you know, I was trying to be in my peace. Or I was in my peace when it happened. But, you know, I was, I was kind of anxious about this and anxious. I don't know, you know, they all over the place. I'm like, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. You and your feelings. You in your feelings. So I really want to take the time to show you how peace interacts with facts, faith, and feelings. Okay. My computer is kind of running slow today, so y'all forgive me. All right. So the facts. If you are a child of God, if you are a daughter of God, Jeannie, if you are a daughter of God, Candy, and whoever else is listening or to this recording, if you are a child of God, there is only one place we go for facts. The word. The word is truth. Jesus was talking in the God, well, he was actually praying the last prayer in the garden to, with, to his father. And he says to, to he asks the father, to sanctify them. Who is them? Us, the ones who believe, the ones he said, you've given me them. I've done my work. I've finished this race. After I go on this cross and rise again, it is finished. But I'm asking you this one thing, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. I mean, that sounds real simple, right? But I think it took me a while. I think I was walking in righteousness for about five years before I actually read this word as simple as it is, and I got the revelation. His word is truth. That means everything that's in there is truth. But then Jesus does this. He, he has this other request. He asked the father, he said, now, listen, I'm, about, I'm going with you. 
I'm going to be sitting on the right hand side of you interceding for them interceding for the ones you sent me for. I'm going to be sitting there and they can't be by that self, Lord. So can you give them the spirit? The spirit of what you ask? The spirit of truth. In John 16, 13, he says, however, when he, he who, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. Not some, not some, all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Now, I don't know about you, <laughs> but if I have to have somebody on my side on that road trip, I want the spirit of truth. I want the spirit, or I want somebody who who know the spirit of truth, <laughs> who got who, who got the connections. You know, wise cancel, wise cancel. So now let's talk about the facts. Facts is, I will deliver you out of the hands of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of of the ruthless. Now, this is the word, right? So it's the truth. It's the truth. Now, some of us is in, feel like we in the hand of the wicked. We feel like we're around ruthless people, people that don't care, people who have no, no consciousness. People who not, you know, for if you are a child of God, there's only so much you can do before the enemy, I mean, I'm sorry, excuse me, well, before the enemy start messing with you, but, but God will pull you right on back. You know, you know, you know how you're doing, it's like, you almost been ready to take that cookie out the cookie jar and mama come in the room. See, that's what the, that's what the children of God do, or what happens to the children of God. All of a sudden, <laughs> right before you get to that point of no return, the Holy Spirit is there to say, hold up, think about it. Think about it. That is when God is delivering you out of the hands of the wicked and redeeming you from the grasp of the ruthless. He is there. He is always there. He is always there. He is waiting for that moment where you say, help me, God. I need you, Lord. He is waiting to be released after you get that lesson. After you learn the lesson that God wants you to learn so that you can become more mature in that thing. So you can strengthen your muscle of faith. And he's right there to pick you up right before you drown, right before the water gets to your, your chin line, right before you say, I give up. As a matter of fact, if we're honest with ourselves, he's there the whole time. He's there before you even trespass, saying, don't do it. Remember what his word said, but see, sometimes we ignore the facts. We ignore the facts because our feelings override the facts. Our feelings are those distractions on the road. You know, those big billboards that we see when we riding down, down the, the highway. And right now, it could just be a phone call on the cell phone. Somebody call you on the cell phone. The distractions, our feelings. Another fact, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. That's a fact. That's a fact. When you broken, you need to know that God is closest to you. And he's ready to save you. He's there. But these are the facts that we need to stand on when the enemy is trying to tell us that that very thing that's breaking us is going to take us out. That God is not going to save you. Who are you but a sinner? These are the facts. These are the facts. Now, to stand on the facts, you need faith, right? That's where faith comes in. Faith. Now faith is 
confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Now that's a version, that's one uh, different version of it, but now faith is the substance. That's the one I like. The substance in, of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Hebrew 11 and one. Now faith is right there in that hard moments I, I, the Holy Spirit started giving giving me that last year, where it was more. You know, some, a lot of times when we pray, we're praying for something that we're hoping for. You know, months down the line, time, you know, all the way down the line. I'm hoping, Lord, in two months. I'm hoping, Lord. I'm hoping. And what I realized is that I begin to cast my focus. See, we're supposed to be casting out demons, right? But we're casting our focus <laughs> out six months from now, next week. You know, things that God may have promised, but we don't know the time nor the hour where he's going to fulfill those promises. But we're casting our focus all the way out there instead of now, 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 now faith is. Now faith is in that fact, that word that scripture that i'm holding on to now because if not the enemy will use it you may be able to hold on it on to it today maybe even in a night maybe tomorrow you're going to remember that his grace and his mercy endures forever and ever and ever but it be that one time that your feelings your feelings try to override that 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 word and you're going to have to fight you're going to have to push it you're going to have to push it from deep within and it may not look good at the time that you pushing that word out you pushing that fact out you standing on that faith it may not feel good but it's for your good. It's for your good. It's, it's, what, it's the substance that you need to stand on that rock. It's the substance that you need to keep pushing. Now, now, now. We're at the end. I, I can't express that any, any more than in those words. We're at the end. I don't know the time nor the hour, but these are like the fundamental things that we should know at the very beginning of our walk. And I think a lot of people know it, but we know it intellectually. We don't know how to get on the bike and actually push the pedal. We know that this is a bike, but we never work the bike. Some of us in training wheels, and if somebody was to come and chase after us, what would we do? Now, last week I was talking about how I use this for an example. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing it back. But I, I use this for an example of how the, the Holy Spirit was talking to me while I was running. And I rem, uh, I cut, so it's almost like every time it's like this new relationship I have, you know. And I think it's because while I'm running, it eliminates distractions. Like if I'm in my house, have my children around, you know, I, if I lay on my bed, more than likely I'm going to fall asleep. <laughs> you know, if I'm in my kitchen, I'm going to call somebody. So there's all these distractions around that's kind of filtering out or, you know, the noise. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The noise over top of God just speaking to me, right? So when I'm running now, it's like nothing but me and the air and God can just speak, right? So now I'm running and I'm up to like 31 minutes now. And I get to this point <laughs> where I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, and I am losing my breath, of course, because I'm not, you know, I'm not an Olympic runner yet. <laughs> the substance of things hoped for in the future. But I am, I'm running this, I'm running and I'm running and I hear him just, you know, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, right? And it's almost like the lesson, the lesson that I'm, that I'm saying right here, it may not feel good. My legs was getting tight. <laughs> I could barely breathe. 
I got sweat rolling down and I, I'm wearing my glasses. <laughs> I'll tell you how much I'm running. I'm wearing my glasses so it's cold and it's fogging up. But it was like, it didn't look good. It didn't feel good. But it was for my good. It was for my good. Taking care of our body is a part of what we need to do. How are we going to minister to people? And this was the eat right portion of, um, you know, the way of the righteous, the revelation that the Lord gave, gave me, is how was I going to minister to people if I wasn't well, healthy, you know? And when it's time to get up and go, what do you do? You can't be, oh, I'm sick today, especially in this world that's filled with all kinds of stuff. But that's a whole nother message. But I think, I think we, I made the point. So what holds all of this together? As I was saying, when I was running, when I got to that place of that boy, I gave in to the feeling, the feeling of my legs being tight, the feeling of me being tired, the enemy would, uh, the thoughts, I'm gonna say the thoughts that would come to my head was, oh my God, girl, you didn't eat enough, you didn't drink enough, you know you can't make this, this is not, this, this give up right there, just give up, just, just let it go, <laughs> just keep walking, ain't nobody gonna know, <laughs> it's just you, right? that was that anxiety that was that panic that was that give up give up voice right now when i got into peace when i just said you know what i'm just going to be okay with the fact the fact is here we go the fact is i am not <laughs> going to die today <laughs> because i'm running i might be out of breath but if i keep running i'm not going to fall out right and there was a peace so peace is not a feeling i was my legs were still hurting my you know the sweat was still coming down my my glasses were still far it didn't feel good it didn't look good but it was a peace where i could think clearly i wasn't in my feelings i wasn't allowing the pain or discomfort to take over so peace is a state or a period in which there is no war or a war has ended now when i look for the definition of course i was like lord <laughs> holy spirit what are you saying because i found this definition it's not something i, I made up i found this definition okay it's a period in which there is no war or war has ended but what we, what we need to realize is that this war is going on in the inside of you. It's the war between your flesh and your mind. It's the war. It's the war between you and you. <laughs> See, it's easy when the war is between you and somebody else, right? You know, you and your coworker, you and your family member, you and somebody you used to go to church with, or you, you know, all that. It's it's that's easy. You can point it out. Okay. I you, and as a matter of fact, you can just separate yourself. You can just say, I'm not talking to them. It's easy to identify the war outside of you, right? But the war in you, that voice in you that's not God, the your flesh, the enemy's voice. But how do we distinguish between the two is by going into that state where there is no war, where, we, where we're standing on the fact, the word, so that, that peace is law and order. And I found it quite interesting that uh, another way of saying peace, and I'm and I'm when I say I got this from the dictionary, this is in the dictionary that that another way of saying peace is law and order, because this is what the Moses law was meant to do was to establish law and order. But Paul said that it was weakened by the flesh. It was weakened by the flesh. Why? Because the flesh would always remind you of what you could not do. It will always remind you of your past. It will always remind you of what somebody said you was instead of who God said you are. 
it will always remind you of uh, of your failures instead of the expected end that God created you to be the purpose of why you're here on earth it'll always remind you that it doesn't feel good it doesn't look good but it'll never tell you that it's for your good it'll never tell you that God is working it out for your good every piece of it the broken pieces the good pieces the gold pieces and the raggedy ends. He's working it out for your good. So our job, our only job, our only job is to keep seeking that peace, keep seeking that place inside of you where there is no war, where that part of you, that flesh dies daily so that he can rise, where, where we decrease so he can increase. In Jesus' mighty name, seeking a state of or a period in which there is no war. That is our job. So we can hear him clearly. Where we can say, Holy Spirit, is that you? Without jumping into our feelings. And I use this example a lot, and I'm going to keep using this example. <laughs> When I watch, uh, you know, uh, any kind of movie with an action hero, they are a great examples of what I mean. Chaos going everywhere, especially Bruce Willis movies. I know everybody's seen a Bruce Willis movie. Chaos going on everywhere around them. And they are the calmest. They don't move. They don't tweet. Everybody else is screaming. Oh, my God, I can't believe this. But they're sitting there and they're calm. Not calm in a, like nothing is going on. Not calm as in, oh, I'm in a spa getting my nails and a massage. Not that type of calm. But their spirit, their soul, their mind, their will, their emotions is at a state of peace. Why? So they can gather the information around them. They can collect the facts. The fact is, there's a way out of here. The fact is, all I got to do is find it. And for us, the fact is, there is a way out because God has a purpose for you. He got a purpose for your family, your children. He has a purpose. So there is a way out. All we have to do is follow it by his word, by his promises. Peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You see how them feelings get you? <laughs> he said, I'm giving you my peace. I leave, I leave my peace, I'm giving you my peace, but it's not like the world. I had, I know, the first time I had the peace challenge, I had, a, I had someone in the group that was more new age. And I think that when they came into the group, and this is not, this is not to talk about anybody or being negative. This is just to, to really highlight this example. But when they came into the, to the group, they assumed that because I said peace, it was peace within kind of like what we see in new age it was that what they call zen or you know that uh you know i don't, I don't you know i th think you guys know what i'm talking about but that's the, how the world thinks that's how the world thinks the peace that you get standing on a lake or sitting on a lake at the beach going on a vacation the temporary moments of life he said, I'm not, I don't give, it, give you that kind of peace. But he said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Why would he say that right after he's telling you, I'm giving you my peace? You know, when we have, you know, our children, when we say, listen, I'm going to trust you with this. I'm going to give you the keys to my car, but don't be drinking, <laughs> right? Because it's going to counteract what I'm giving you. 
He said, I'm going to give you my peace. I'm going all the way to the cross and I'm going to die on this day. And on three days, I'm going to break hell wide open so that you can have this state in you. So when the enemy comes, you can go into that room inside of yourself and hear my voice. The Holy Spirit can bring the truth to you. He's saying that. Don't let your heart be troubled so you won't hear it. You won't hear me. You'll, let the, you'll, you'll get caught up with the, with the enemy's plan for you. Don't do it. Don't be afraid. God is not the author of fear. So you know it's not me. God, he's given us so many hints in his word. Don't be afraid. It's not me. If you feel fear. Ooh, in Jesus' mighty name. Now, that was John uh, 14 and 27. And now we're going to move on to Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious. And this is one, uh, this is like the way of the righteous. <laughs> it should be like our mission statement. Do not be anxious. Or another version, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Why is he saying it? Not because anxious, not because anxiety is not going to come. I think anxiety is like one of the number one uh, things that happen. Me, when you talk to people, almost anybody can tell you they have some dealing with anxiety. They struggle with it, or they, you know, some. You, you. I mean, hey, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't, God, uh, look good for you. God bless you, <laughs> but. If you do, God say, be anxious for nothing. Not that it's not going to come. He's telling you it's a setup. Anxiety is a setup. Anxiety means you trying to do it in your own will and you don't, you're not standing on faith. You're not standing on faith. He's telling you that fear and pushed you in a direction and I ain't in it. He's giving you the facts the clues to follow the pathway unto him to keep you on the path of righteousness. So he says, instead of that, instead of that, as soon as you feel that anxiety coming up, you pray, put your petition before me. Why? I need you to shift your focus. I need you to shift your focus on me. I need you to remember who I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Keep your eyes on me. And if you do, he said, and then, and then the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. See this, these are the, the weapons. These are the tools that we need to know on this race. As we run in this race, that every time the enemy and his plots and his plans and his little stumbling blocks that he put in our way, there is a way out. We don't have to stay in this bed of anxiety. We don't have to let fear, hold fear's hand and walk us through that, that uh, valley of darkness. We don't have to do that. Even if we grab his hand, we can say, hey, hold up, <laughs> hold up. I'm in my emotions. I'm in my emotions. Let me, get on, let me stand on the fact and wait with faith. And to God, send, send the answers. God, show me the way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Seek peace and pursue it. This is how I managed. I'm going to say I managed. This is how the Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord, got me through the hardest years of my life 
the hardest pain of my life, the, the biggest heartbreak of my life. Every step of the way he told me to seek peace and pursue it. When somebody told me I wasn't nothing without them, I would never be anything without them. The Lord said, seek peace and pursue it. And see, for most people, they think when somebody say that, seek peace and pursue it, it's like you a doormat. No, no, no. He was saying, seek my face in this and pursue me. Don't you get twisted up in those words. Don't you believe that lie? I told you you was my daughter. I gave up my son for you. That you may live life and have it more abundantly so that you may know me better. See, that's the peace. That's the peace. I could only hear those words. I could only hear his voice inside of that peace. The place that, that, that Jesus carved out for you, for me. When he died on that cross and he rose again, he carved that space out for us to be. That room that I talk about, that I lay in, the, in that bed and I just allow the Holy Spirit to do his will, his work in my life. And he bandaged me up and he, he molded me all over again. He filled me with his spirit all over again. But see, we got to do this daily, daily, every day. And I'm getting to moments to moments and moment to moment. I have to ask the Lord for more and more and more of his peace so I can stay in him. So I can stay in him. First Peter 3, 10 through 11, it says, For whoever would love life and see good days. Now, I don't know about you but I want to love life. And see, the enemy told me I couldn't love life no more. See, when you come from a place where you've had it all, you've been there, done that, you know what I'm saying? I came from a high place, you know? <laughs> I came from a high place and, 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 and I just dropped. And the enemy told me I would never get up. You will never get out that bed of depression. You will never get away from rejection. You will never get it. But I fought my way out. I grab hold of the Holy Spirit and I let him lead me out of that darkness to that light, standing in front of God. Mm. So I want to see good days for the rest of my life. That's what, that was what carried me. That was the breath that carried me now. I want to see good days. I want to see it. I know you want to see it. <laughs> you know, whoever. Can you guys still hear me? Because my internet kind of went out. I, st I hear you. Okay. It just sent a little symbol up there. Okay, so for, for whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. You see the instructions? You see the instructions? Another word of the Lord that, that, that God gave me um, a long time ago is submit to God, resist the devil, he will flee. This is the submission. The submission is keep your tongue from evil, keep your lips from deceitful talk, then Turn from evil, do good, and seek peace and pursue it. It's an instruction. It's not a choice. It's not a choice. And again, it doesn't mean being a doormat. It means finding God in everything. Finding where the Holy Spirit, had, where the Holy Spirit has carved out the next step for you. In Jesus' name. I know it's uh it's eight forty nine. So I want to open up if anybody will have any questions. Um, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop right there, and we'll continue this one next week. Anybody have any questions? Anybody have anything they wanna um, add?
Well, I would like to um, give my testimony. I mean, we talk, so you, you know about this one, but um, mm -hmm. where I work, um, there, there's Well, people. you got to intro introduce yourself, so, oh, I, you know. This is Jeannie. How are you, everybody? <laughs> um, so, where I work tends to be um, a lot of personalities. And um, there was this one particular person that was really, really trying. And um, I kept my peace. Like, I learned... <sighs> All I can say is, is that without getting into too much into detail, mm -hmm. um, basically is that no matter how much this woman pushed and said things and did things and um, really trying me, I held my peace in that whole situation. Like, Adversity, God never said adversity and challenges will not come. They will come. But I learned to stand still in him so I myself am not losing it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, lo and behold, she ended up having to go to a different location. And I ended up staying where she was really trying it to be in the opposite. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I know is, is my boss kind of like snickered because I guess she knows how this woman is and said, you know what? You are the most professional person. You kept it together and you were very professional and I'm very proud of you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, um, so, because I want everybody to hear this now. Jeannie ain't always been like this. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Nah, nah. I'm not going to tell your, your, your testimony, but I want, I want people to see what God in following his truth can do. Now, yeah. before, yeah. I, I called Jeannie the, my Puerto Rican spice sister. <laughs> because, <laughs> it, you know, somebody say something, she going to tell you in a spicy way where you could put your, you know, what yes. you can do with yourself. Now, after understanding and walking in this fact, in this truth, it's not, I, I want you to say, I want you to be able to answer this, but it's not that you're not saying anything anymore, right? You're still holding your truth. You're still speaking your truth. Am I right? Yeah, I'm still speaking my truth. I'm still, okay, let me explain a little bit about me. The old genie, um, it would have been on site. There would have been a whole argument. There would have been a whole, um, going down on it. It it, mm -hmm. it just would have, it would have been terrible. Mm -hmm. And then I would have left feeling righteous. Like yeah, she deserved it. I'm glad I told her off. I'm glad I slugged her or whatever. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that's how it would have been. And then later on, I would have felt guilt and ashamed. And then I would have come back to myself and justified it. Like, what are you being, you know, guilty about, you know? Right. Uh, now the uh, question the, it. the question is why would you have react that way why would you have told her off and you know did all of the things what would have been pushing you to do those things my feelings i would have been in my feelings there like yeah and and the thing with my past now i don't want to say i'm in control of my feelings because i still feel what I feel, but I'm in my peace. Like I know the promises of God. I know what he has said. I know I, my faith. I know what the facts are, mm -hmm. you know, you know who what, you are. <laughs> right. Exactly. I know who I am. I'm doing such a bad job of explaining this, but no, you're doing great. Don't go there. <laughs> you're doing <laughs> but, great. You know, I know who I am now, so I stand firm. 
So when this lady is like yelling at me across the room, telling me not to do X, Y, Z, I'm still doing X, Y, Z because X, Y, Z is what my job calls for. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and I did, I could have turned around. I could have called my boss, I could have, there's multiple things that I could have done and looked like a, a, a horrible fool, but I didn't. I kept my peace. I knew that God opened these doors up for me and what he promised me, no man can take that from me. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. And I stood in that, that if I just do my job, what God has given me on this earthly plane to do, okay, not her or the devil or anybody else can take that from me because God gave it to me. And I stood in that peace. Yeah. So I'm still, you know, so I'm not going to say that I didn't have feelings about it. I was like this in my head. I'm saying this girl is annoying, mm -hmm. but I didn't react to it nor did I take it deep within my heart for it to create a bitter root. Amen. You understand? So Amen. where I would turn around and then get into a full out argument and for, and with her, you know, mm -hmm. I stood in my peace. So when people say peace is a feeling, peace is not a feeling. Peace is, is I feel like, um, a knowing that even in the midst of adversity, like God is there and he has you. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to, to get cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs <laughs> because he got this. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. And, and I don't know if I'm using the right word, but that's the only way I, I could explain it. It's like, I know the promises of God. I don't have to lose my mind. I, I am in my peace, even though this woman is screaming on me. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Amen. Thanks um, for sharing, Janie. You're welcome. All right. Candy, did you want to share anything? How's your week been? Uh, my week's been very good. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of driving around, but I'm, as I'm listening here, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's just, again, it's just something else that I'm hearing. I feel like, you know, the Lord has me in this place to hear these things, to just make it even more concrete mm -hmm. um, in my life. I know that things have definitely changed even for me, kind of like Jeannie was saying, how you can go through many situations and kind of get stirred up inside. Uh, the re it's like the reward. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just gonna say it like this, the reward of having continued to seek the Lord and in seeking him, I'm seeking peace mm -hmm. as um, during that time, he's taken all of those things that have been so deep rooted in me uh, that would have allowed me uh, to react to the things people said or the things that people have done. Mm -hmm. um, so because um, whether in his word or in, in prayer and worship, spending time with him has caused my mind to continue to be renewed. I know the truth of who he is and all of the wonderful gifts <laughs> that come with him. Mm -hmm. And I don't get stirred up um, the way that I used to and I don't get shaken and it can, everything can be upside down it can look like what god said it's gonna look like as he told me it's gonna look like destruction you know and and mm -hmm. what i'm going through now in the past mm -hmm. i would have been a wreck you know i probably would have been looking for some pills for uh, anxiety mm -hmm. um how do you deal with the bills how do you deal with your loved ones how do you deal with no work how do you deal with you know no car how do you deal with, like doing the things that the lord tells you to do and it looks like you're losing mm -hmm. but honestly i feel like i'm winning because i have his perfect peace mm. even though everything else looks like it's just being you know 
upside down. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've never had this much peace and lacked more things in a physical sense because of just seeking him, mm. you know, and, and, and going after that piece that these are, you know, those truths, like you said, like, it's not about your feelings, you know, <laughs> like, because I have had that weight of anxiety on me. And I always thought, oh, you know, I'm just different. Um, I'm never going to have peace. I could walk in a room and I guess, like you say, like discerning of spirits, like other people are going through these things and you go in there right. or, or deal with these demons you go in there and all of a sudden you're feeling like oh, I just you know mm -hmm. I just stepped into an anxious room uh, right. and just thinking it was mine but now when I'm hit with those things I know that his peace belongs to me and like, okay, this doesn't belong to me. Knowing that that is the truth, I can then really speak with authority mm. um, against it. Yes. Um, it does. Um, it is something that we have to hear. Like, we have to hear you speak on this. We have to continue to get this in because you could go through 40 years of your life mm -hmm. of dealing with these things. And so sometimes you could be caught off guard, like, oh, that's a feeling that I used to feel. And so, you know. Yes. And go back into it. Mm -hmm. So for those moments, because they still kind of happen, um, I thank God that I get to hear this word tonight. See, I, I don't care if there's 100 people on this call or two people on this call. I know when I show up, the word is for me. <laughs> Amen. I, Amen. I know that. Amen. I know that. It's all like Amen. perfect time, the perfect word. I need like, this is... I'm trying to tell you, I don't know if the Lord is doing something great, but mm -hmm. everything is for me and my process and the word that I need and my growth in him. And um, so I might be rambling. I'm sorry. No, no, you fine, girl. This is, why, this is why I don't get up here and talk. No, no. But <laughs> this, is, this is why I wanted to use this platform because I feel like, um, you know, a lot of people, especially with the media, social media, you, you hear the word and then you sit there in your thoughts trying to figure it out, you know, right. um, being in deliverance, I would take people to get delivered. And then after it had all these questions and all these moments where the enemy was trying to take them out in different ways. And I was like, people need to someone, what I call wise counsel to, to help them through right. that space. I'm not trying to be the Holy Spirit. But I will definitely lead you to him. You know what I'm saying? It's like in yeah. this moment. And so I think this is important to have this kind of platform, um, especially when we don't have like the, the church settings for this anymore. Um, yes, everything is so, you know, it's so grand or, you know, when when you go to the Lord, that, that's beautiful, right? But then right. you have that moment there that there's just some things that you just, us don't know and some people will give their life to the lord accept jesus but then they haven't been delivered yeah so mm -hmm. and you know every church may do it differently they may you know give your life right then and then all of a sudden they're laying hands on you and you're going through the deliverance process mm -hmm. a lot of churches nowadays you accept jesus as your savior but mm -hmm. you don't go through deliverance they don't have deliverance ministries they don't discuss the things that are you know, it's like if they're preaching on something, you may not get to hear this word until two years out, yep. you know? Mm -hmm. So, and then you may be dealing with a spirit of pride. Maybe you have questions, but you don't want people to know how much you don't know because you're sitting around with what seems to be a bunch of tenured Christians, you know? Right, right. <laughs> and it's just an uncomfortable atmosphere for a lot of people. So I know that there's so many people that could really just benefit from hearing these things because these are the the things that you're teaching right now, like peace, this is like foundation. Like you need this mm -hmm. because if everything is going to get you and get your mind stirred up and not understand that this is what the Lord gives you, he gives you this peace, then, then you just, you know, you spend 15 years going up and down and just pretending because everybody else looks like they're at peace and they're a perfect Christian right. and they don't have problems. <laughs> <laughs> they, they need this word. Uh huh. Uh huh. Wow. Jenny, did you did you raise yeah. your hand? Yeah, I did. I just wanted to um, piggyback off of what Candy was saying because um, 
there's a lot of people, even with me, when I started and we met, right? Like mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't know, you know, in real life, like, how does this work? You know what I mean? Like when people say, oh, worry not. What do you mean don't worry? You know what I'm saying? And that's what I think, like my struggle is that like real life examples. And now that it's happening in my own life, because now that there, there's someone once told me that if you do this often enough, it will just somehow kind of like, manifest naturally you don't have to like force yourself to think of like peace right Mm -hmm. um or imagine what peace looks like peace is what it is it's peace right and that's how I felt kind of like finally has connected the more that I have learned the more that I have been around you the more that I see what it looks like in reality because there are times when you hear some of these Christian sermons, you think like they got it all together, like Candy was saying. And meanwhile, they're going through the same thing, but they're not fully explaining what it looks like Mm -hmm. in real life instead of just words on paper. You know what I mean? Right. And and that's where I felt like um, that's what the Lord is telling me to do. Um, from the very beginning, when um, you guys read the book, you'll see how <laughs> the people that I was talking to in that moment of brokenness, they would have all of these cliches that they would say, girl, the Lord going to bless you. Girl, you know how people say that? And you, you ask somebody, how you doing? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. And Candy, you said it. When you have discernment, and somebody tell you, I'm blessed and highly favored. You'd be like, you is not telling me the truth. Because <laughs> you, because when you have this sermon, you hear underneath the words, in between the words. So you saying you blessed and highly favored. But, and I would, I would ask them, what do you mean? What does that mean to you? <laughs> yeah. You just, it's just something that you're saying. It's some tradition. It sounds righteous you know and right. that became that became the um i don't know the word i'm looking for but that became my passion like i don't want to just say this lord i want to live it you said yeah. if i can have life and life more abundant i want to know what that abundant life is <laughs> cuz it don't it don't look like the people i'm saying it don't look like the people the person who's right? telling me this they don't look like they're having life more abundantly right they 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 look bitter (laughs) they look bitter they look hard they got the heartens of hearts you know yes they welcome you into the church when you broken and busted and disgusted but as soon as you get get yourself together they they're the first one talking about you i don't want to be like that lord Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't want to be like that lord i want to be who you say, I want to, I want to know this righteous person, the one whose prayers availeth much. I want to know that person. Yeah. You know, so again, it, I wanted those words to be life to me in every scripture. I kept seeking his face for it. I kept seeking his face until I understood it, not just intellectually, but by and through his home, Holy Spirit. Right. And I didn't have, um, I, I wasn't really in a ministry, so it wasn't, and I didn't, I wasn't brought up in a church, you know, um, I had an evangelist for older sister, but I wasn't raised in a church. So, you know, sometimes when you're raised in a church, it just becomes like the walls to you, you just second nature. So when I heard the, the word, when I read the word, it was clear as the word, it wasn't you know, uh, elder so-and-so said, uh, it wasn't any of that. It was just me and God's word. Right. And then it was me, God's word, and his Holy Spirit giving me the revelation, giving me the understanding and the wisdom. And I prayed for wisdom over and over and over again. Give me the wisdom. So this is what people need to know. This is what new members class is supposed to be about. Mm-hmm. 
Isn't that what King, it was a King Solomon who asked for wisdom? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, he sure did. And that, that was the smartest thing he ever did, right? Yep, <laughs> sure it was. Oh, boy. So anyway, I am, I am blessed. I am so grateful that you all showed up. He said, when two or more come together, he is in the midst of us. So Father God, we thank you right now for your presence throughout yeah. this word. We thank you for this word. We thank you just for the, the richness of being in your presence, Lord. Mm. I feel your joy right now, God. I feel your joy right now, God. And whoever's listening, whoever's listening now, whoever's listening after, let them feel your joy. Let him, let them give them a little bit, mm -hmm. give them a little bit of that peace. Just a little bit yeah. of that peace. In the yeah. midst of that storm, Father God, show them that room, that inner room that you, that you carved out for them, God, and let them just sit there and watch you do that, the work. Let your will be done in their yeah. life in their children's life, in their homes. Let your will be done in our lives, God. We surrender all. We submit all unto you because you are our everything, Lord. When every, it's this Friday night, we could be doing all kinds of things, but listen, I'm sitting in my closet on this floor talking about you, giving you the glory and the honor and all the Praise. respect that you deserve, Lord. Yeah. Because you brought me through. You brought me through. You gave me the greatest gift that any man can ever receive is salvation. Salvation mm -hmm. through your son. Through your son, God. And I thank you and I give you all the glory and all the praise for the rest of my life. In Jesus' mighty Jesus. name. In Jesus' Jesus. Lord. Name. Amen. Amen. All right, Amen. Shabbat Shalom to everyone. I will be Bat back shalom. next Friday. If um, you guys want to invite anybody, I'll still, I, I try to keep the link on the Facebook page pinned to the top. If there's any problems, just um, send me a message. I know last week I had a problem with the link. Um, okay. But if there's any problems, just send me a message. Well, I had a problem with the, I had a problem with the link. I had to actually go on to Zoom because mm -hmm. it wouldn't take me to Zoom, right? Mm -hmm. So I had to go on to my Zoom app and enter the information. Okay. So if that, if that works, um, but the other one wouldn't even log in, so I had to make oh. had to put more dates to it. Um, okay. My, my, my link did work, um, did so it might have just been an internet thing for you, Jeannie. I'm not sure, because I, I used that link to get right on yeah okay this one did too so um so we'll be back next friday eight o'clock if there's any changes in schedule or whatever i will post it on the facebook page okay um, and the schedule says tomorrow are you going to be on tomorrow um no but see th i'm gonna tell you why it says that because when i entered it in tried to schedule the program i put yeah. in seven i put in like seven consecutive days so that i would have the link that same length for a long time. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out how to work this thing. <laughs> right. So I need, yeah. but see if I reschedule it, I'll lose the length. So um, oh, I'm going okay. to see if I can just edit it so I don't have to keep changing links. Um, I'm going to ask Sister Carolyn because she she always uses the same link, I, I do believe. Oh, there, okay. should, there should be a way where I can do every Friday, um, but I'll work on that this week every other friday so it doesn't have those dates and i don't want to confuse anybody okay okay sounds like all plan. right so for now next friday now on january the 13th i'm going to be doing another smoothie challenge but this challenge is going to be smoothies and salads so if y'all want to get in on that 10 days of eating right <laughs> Um, okay. I'll be, I'll be posting those videos on the Facebook page. I won't be, I won't be here, but I'll do that on Facebook, but those are the events coming up. And of course the, the book is, um, going to be worked on and we'll, I'll give a date for that as well. Yes. But yes. Y'all, you guys, I will see you later. Be blessed. 
Um, if you have any friends or anybody you think that would enjoy um, next Friday, let them come on in. <laughs> okay. All right. Be blessed, everybody. All right. Y'all have a good night. And Thank see you, you on too. the next one. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.